Vivian. That's a beautiful name. Thank you. My parents got it from that 70s show. <laughs> Maud. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times a celeb's significant other appeared on their TV shows. Hello, Lily. Hey, Bill. Hey, Barney. Scooter, what are you doing here? For this list, we'll be looking at the most notable times our favourite famous couples made cameo appearances or had recurring roles alongside their other half. Which of these celebrity cameos do you think is the most iconic? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Jason Ritter, Candy. According to Melanie Linsky, her husband Jason Ritter landed the role of Deputy Denny Reese after she sent the Candy team a photo of him with their daughter. Supposedly, they were drawn to his newly grown out of boredom mustache as it felt appropriate for the show's setting. Got something on your shoe there. Oh, keep kicking my storm door, and I can't seem to get my husband to fix it. Nevertheless, he stars as a mustacheless cop investigating the murder of Betty Gore, played by Linsky. He wasn't the only famous significant other to cameo in this miniseries either. You ain't special. I'm screwing your husband. Well, guess what? I'm pregnant, so he ain't leaving me, so suck on that. Take your swimsuit and get. And we'll be back inside. Right. Jessica Biel shared that her husband, Justin Timberlake, was drawn to the script. But as a producer on the series, she told him that they couldn't afford him. She didn't really try to hide anything, did she? She did not. You might say she's pretty uh, inept criminal, wouldn't she? Probably I would. So Timberlake agreed to do it practically for free, appearing in two episodes as Deputy Sheriff Steve Defabar. Number 9, Mila Kunis. Two and a half men. The former That 70s Show co star's journey from friend zone to end zone has been well documented. However, the couple preferred to keep their relationship on the down low, leaving many to speculate over the years. Vivian. That's a beautiful name. Thank you. My parents got it from That 70s Show. <laughs> The couple poked fun at the media's interest in their private lives when Kunis appeared in season 11 of the sitcom. She plays Vivian, a free-spirited traveller whom Kutcher's Walden falls for. There are plenty of in-jokes, references and jabs at celebrity culture. Mm. What's your deal, Walden? Good-looking guy, rich, Malibu beach house. I bet you only date hot actresses. God, no. I'd never date an actress. Their chemistry is unmissable, and it feels like a snapshot of an average night at the Kutcher Kunis household. I mean, who cares who's dating whom, or who's engaged to who, or who has a sex tape that no one will ever, ever see? We wish we'd seen more of Vivian, but her brief guest spot was unforgettable. Number 8, Dax Shepard, The Good Place. Dax Shepard and Kristen Bell are no strangers to professional collaborations, often crossing paths on screen. Trent! Is that you? Uh, who else could it be? Come on, dap it out. On bone. What's up? In chat. So we were all waiting for Shepard to show up in The Good Place, and when it finally happened, it was devilishly good. He played Chet, a demon from The Bad Place with a morbid speciality. I actually started his training program to prep for when the Girls Gone Wild dude gets here. Joe Francis. The one. Legend. <laughs> Bro hams. Get over here and meet my top dog, Trent. Dude's a straight beast. Chet mistakes at Chidi for a colleague he worked with 800 years prior. Shepard shines in the role and makes being bad look effortlessly cool. Of course, it's his hilariously cheeky interaction with Belle's Eleanor that stands out. Man, get back over there, dog. Damn, you got that good stank. Thanks. Right back at you, bud. Smash you later. Let's roll. You might also recall that Mary Steenburgen, who's married to Ted Danson, made a brief cameo in the series finale as Michael's acoustic guitar teacher. Number 7, Amy Poehler, Arrested Development. The hilarious comedy actors Amy Poehler and Will Arnett were married for more than a decade. Would you ever listen to what I say? I'm sorry that I don't memorize every single word that comes out of your mouth. Sometimes I just like to think. Think my thoughts. Ugh, we'll talk about this when I get home. It was hot. During that time, they cracked up audiences with memorable appearances on each other's shows. Remember when Arnett guest starred on Parks and Rec as Leslie's blind date Chris, an MRI technician who basically predicted that she'd have triplets? You got a great oven. Okay, time to go. You got ample room in there. Honestly, if you wanted to, 
You could go triplets right off the bat. Meanwhile, Polo appeared on five episodes of Arrested Development, playing Arnett's character, Job's wife. The two first met in season one, where a snowballing series of pranks ultimately leads to their nuptials. I'm being sued for divorce. Me. Thought you were single? Yeah, I keep forgetting that I got married. Job met a woman one night, and after a series of escalating dares, married her. Eventually, the seal that bit off Buster's hand comes between them, and they divorce. We may have never learned her name, but she'll always be blamey to us. Well, she's got a name, and I'm gonna find out what it is, and then I'm gonna make a pun on it, and that's what I'll call her. Bad example. If her name's Amy, I'll call her Blamey. Number six, Daniil Ackles, Supernatural. Supernatural loves a good metatrope, so it was only a matter of time before Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles would find their real lives and fictional counterparts crossing over. For whatever reason, our life is a TV show. Why? I don't know. No, seriously, why? Why would anybody want to watch our lives? Padalecki met his future wife, Genevieve, when she took over the recurring role of Ruby in season four. She later returned for the sixth season, playing a fictionalized version of herself. Right. Right, because you're not Ruby. You, I mean, how could you be? You, of course, you are the lovely actress who plays Ruby. Meanwhile, Daniil Ackles joined in season 13 as Sister Jo, a faith healer who makes a deal with Lucifer. According to the actress, who got married to the Supernatural star in 2010, the role was written for her, and she was told to have fun with it. And if you're so smart, what do I really want? Love. To belong, to have a place, a home, a family. Number five, Ben Falcone, Gilmore Girls. Melissa McCarthy and Ben Falcone are perhaps one of the funniest couples in Hollywood. Every shared on-screen moment between them is simply unforgettable, to say the least. One such occasion that may have slipped your mind occurred during the third season of Gilmore Girls, while they were still dating. My name is Lorelai Gilmore, and this is Suki St. James. Hi. I know this isn't exactly the best time for this, but we were wondering if you had any idea what's going to happen with the dragonfly. Because we want it! Falcone briefly appears as a lawyer Lorelai and Suki interrogate after Fran, the original owner of the dragonfly, passes away. It's a short interaction, but gives us just enough to show how perfectly they complement each other's comedic styles. We would really like to buy it. And keep it as an inn. Yes, a wonderful inn. Dedicated to Fran. Yes, we'll keep it the dragonfly. And we promise not to burn it down. Oh, yes, that's right. Hey, we could put that in the agreement. This was the first time they acted on screen together, and as we know, it would be far from their last. It's like you get to go to work with your best friend, and it's exactly how we met, and we became such good friends because we loved doing this together. Every joint appearance only makes us love them even more. Number four, Nancy Carell, The Office. This comedic power couple met when Nancy took Steve's improv class at the Second City Training Center. She told the Office Ladies podcast that showrunner Greg Daniels always knew he wanted her on board in some way. Hey, 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 Carol. Hi. You look great. Thanks. Thank you for inviting me. It looks so great in here. Oh, well, this. That's how we do it in the paper biz. And would you believe it, he thought she'd be perfect to play Carol Stills, a real estate agent and love interest to Steve Carell's Michael Scott. Michael and Carol date throughout the second and third seasons, although they ultimately break up. I think you're a really sweet guy. Okay. But um, I don't know how to deal with, with like this thing and, and the proposal. And I don't think things are going to work out with no. us. Still, she appears in season seven and the series finale. Also, did you PB&J fans know that Pam's lactation consultant, Clark, was played by Jenna Fisher's real husband, Lee Kirk? I'm the consultant. Got milk? <laughs> All right, uh, let's see what we're working with. Number three, Alexis Denisoff, David Burtka, and Taryn Killam, How I Met Your Mother. We might only have met the titular mother in the season eight finale, but we did meet some real life significant others along the way. Alexis Denisoff, who met his future wife, Alison Hannigan, on the Buffy the Vampire Slayer set, played Robin's skeezy co-anchor, Sandy Rivers. Lily, you okay? Oh yeah, I'm just tired, and when I get tired, I get cranky. Really? I couldn't imagine you cranky. Really? I couldn't imagine you cranky. 
And speaking of Hannigan, remember Scooter, Lily's high school boyfriend who's still in love with her? He's played by Neil Patrick Harris's husband, David Burtka. Where in the ceremony is the place where they ask if anyone objects? Ah, uh, don't think they do that anymore. Oh, so when do you think someone should do it? Also SNL alum, and Kobe Smulders' real-life husband, Taron Killam, plays Marshall and Barney's colleague, Gary Blauman. I will see you walking down the aisle. I'll be the guy in the eighth row going like this. <laughs> right? Ah, uh, good luck today! Thank you. He also had an affair with Barney's brother, James. Needless to say, all were legend, wait for it, dairy additions to the show. True story. Number two, Megan Mullally. Parks and Recreation. To say that Ron Swanson and Tammy too have a turbulent relationship would be a humongous understatement. Still, their unhinged dynamic provides endless entertainment. I can't resist her. What, Ron, you have to. Stay out of this. This is our relationship. He's my man, and we have something twisted and beautiful. Credit to husband and wife, Nick Offerman and Megan Mullally. We imagine that only a couple with such a strong bond and equal wits could make such a dumpster fire relationship so compelling. Plus, Ron and Tammy share a burning passion for each other, which we don't think required too much acting on either part. Four hours. Hey, Swanson! Leslie, <laughs> congratulate us. You might also remember Offerman as Nick, a plumber in season four of Will and Grace. He later returned to play celeb baker Jackson Boudreaux in the reboot, but apparently Karen doesn't go for that type. I would like to spend time with you. <laughs> so not my type. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Chris Pratt, mum. Anna Faris's then husband played Nick, who effortlessly captures the hearts of his Aunt Marjorie's friends. She's my sponsor no. in AA, and it might get a little weird. Understood. I'll gladly be your dirty little secret. Oh, God, that just makes it hotter. Ryan Michelle Bathe, This Is Us. Sterling K. Brown's wife played Yvette, the mother of one of young Randall's friends. Do you think that my son could play with you sometime after school? Yeah, yeah. I think we can do that. Macaulay Culkin, Dollface. Newly engaged to Brenda Song, Culkin played Dan, who Madison suspects of being the bread bowl killer. Thought you said you had celiac disease. And that's why you couldn't be the bread bowl killer. Stella, come on. I was just absent mindedly having some. You know, absent minded bread. Erin Dark. Miracle Workers. Dark takes on the role of Daniel Radcliffe's partner both on and off screen. You dwell on guilt? Me too, it is one of my favorite forms of shame. Really? How do you feel about self-denial? I love it. <laughs> it's like, how much stuff do you actually need, self? Right? So little! Julia Roberts, Law and Order. Roberts was dating Benjamin Bratt when she appeared as Katrina Ludlow, a fundraiser and suspect. A friend of historic preservation. Was he a friend of yours, Miss Ludlow? My work is all about making friends, detective, but a personal friend, no. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Brad Pitt. Friends. We couldn't talk about significant others' cameos without reminding you of when Courtney Cox's now ex, David Arquette, played Malcolm, Ursula's ex, whom Phoebe falls for. However, Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt were the it couple at the time, and based on the audience's reaction, Pitt's guest spot was one for the ages. Hey! Happy Thanksgiving. Ah, uh, thanks. God, Will, I'm so glad that you came. He played Will Colbert, Ross's high school friend and co-founder of the I Hate Rachel Club. The role earned him an Emmy nomination, leaving us wondering why he doesn't do more comedy. That's right. The I Hate Rachel Green Club. Whoa, my God. So what, you all just joined together to hate me? Who else was in this club? Me? And Ross. He's really funny, and his chemistry with everyone, especially Aniston, was off the charts. During their 2021 reunion, the cast cited Pitt's guest spot as one of the all-time bests. Anybody? Okay. 
It's exactly how I imagined it would be. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.